Hello and welcome to part 35 of Video Series and I use Blender 2.7. In this video we'll be talking about weight painting. Alright, so in the last video we created this Minecraft character. If you didn't see the last video, or if you'd like to download this exact file that I'll be working on in this video, you'll find links to both of those in the description below. In the last video, we created this simple Minecraft character out of a single mesh. That means if I select any part of the character's mesh, it's all one object, even though inside of edit mode, the body pieces are disconnected. That means that they are six separate blocks, but all inside of the same mesh. In the second half of the last video, we created this armature rig out of a bunch of bones that control each part of the character. And you'll notice that the arms and legs do have two bones each, which means they will bend. The way that we're going to be animating this character, or the way that you would animate this character, is you would select the armature and go into pose mode. That's how you pose and animate a character. Now in the last part of the last video, we made the mesh of the character a child of the armature rig using a special kind of parenting mode or function that's called with automatic weights. What that means is that when you parent a mesh to a whole armature, it's going to take each individual vertex or vertice in the mesh and parent it individually to a bone or multiple bones in a rig. Now, with automatic weights, that kind of parenting does normally work pretty well for an organic kind of a shape or an organic character. But this Minecraft character is not organic at all. It's very, very low poly. That means the cubes are just basically cubes. There's some extra vertices and loop cuts in the arms and legs, but it didn't do a very good job. The way that I would pose this character in pose mode is I'll right click on any of the bones and of course when you're in pose mode the bones become highlighted with this aqua color and then I could rotate each one of the individual bones so that I could pose that specific body part. Now as you can see if I'm rotating this head bone it's not doing a very good job. The head is becoming very distorted. If I grab let's say one of the arm bones and rotate it it's pulling other parts of the body that it shouldn't be. And the reason why that's happening is because the with automatic weights parenting function in Blender, it took some of the wrong vertices. It thought, well, when I parented it, it took some of these vertices and they thought, hey, you know, this vertice up here should be maybe 20% affected by this bone. When we know that's wrong, we know that all the vertices, all eight vertices in the head block should be controlled just by the head bone. Unfortunately, that's not the case, so we have to fix it in this video using a mode called weight painting. Now, if you've gone ahead and you've rotated the bones or scaled the bones or grabbed bones and moved them around, the way you can fix that is if I press A and A to select all of the bones in my rig, if I press Alt R and Alt G and Alt S, I can clear the rotation movement or scale of the bones in that rig while I'm in pose mode. So again, Alt R, Alt S, and Alt G will get you back to your default pose. Now weight painting or weight paint mode is a mode that you use for meshes when you have a connected rig. So if I go ahead and right click on the mesh and I go down to my header of the, the 3D viewport and I select from the mode menu weight paint mode, you'll notice that, well, I have one bone selected here. I have this upper right arm bone and it's giving me these weird psychedelic colors all over the mesh. What these colors represent are the weights of the vertices that are attached to this bone. If I select different bones, you'll see different parts of the mesh uh, become highlighted. And what this means is if a color is not blue when I select a bone or a part of the mesh is not blue when I select a bone, that means that that part of the mesh is being controlled by that selected bone. So if I select, let's say, the upper arm bone over here, you can see that, well, if blue is not selected at all, that means that none of those vertices in that area are being controlled by that bone, which in this case over here is good. We don't want the character's left arm to be controlled by his right arm's upper bone. But as you can see, some of the parts of the head and lots of the body are being controlled by that bone, and that's not a good thing. When you switch into weight paint mode, you get this on your tool shelf, which you can press T or you can press this little plus button to find. You get a whole bunch of new options here. This top picture is the brush that you're using. Right now, we're using a brush called the um, F draw brush and I think I'm gonna switch over to the mix brush and that's what we're gonna stay with for this entire video. I think by default it comes up with the mix brush but I'm not entirely sure so you can go ahead and change that to mix yourself. The way that you're gonna be changing the way that these bones are controlled by the mesh or the mesh is controlled by the bones rather is you're gonna paint away or add 
weight to the different parts of the mesh. Now what you're actually doing is giving each vertice a new value and the value that you're giving it over here in the brush is the weight that you're assigning it. Now I'm going to be using my mix mode for most of this so you should as well and generally I don't change it away from that but we'll talk about that very briefly. So let's say that I don't want this head to have any influence by my selected bone. What I want to do is I want to paint these vertices with a influence or a weight of zero. So I'm going to turn down my weight all the way down to zero and I'm going to start painting just by left clicking and drawing. And as you can see the head is becoming more of that dark blue color and that's great. Now I can zoom in and I can change my brush radius. If I make this a little bit wider you can see the word radius. And I can turn that down to make a smaller brush and there are keyboard shortcuts and I'll get to that in a minute or so. So I can paint away and I can keep painting just to make sure that any light blue becomes that nice dark blue color. And this is fixing that problem where other parts of the body are becoming sheared and are being controlled by the wrong bones. Now over here, it's going to become a little bit tricky to select, you know, let's say just the vertice on his shoulder versus the vertice on his arm. So this is where a special masking mode comes in really handy. Down here on our header of the 3D viewport, there's this button here that looks like a checkerboard on a face. In fact, there's two. There's one for vertices and there's one for faces. I'm going to recommend you use this one. And what this button is, is masking. In other words, if you select now, with this button, a face, you can only paint or affect the vertices on that face. So if I wanted to start deselecting the vertices on the body, what I do is I would right click on the face and I could paint away the vertices that are on that face. But better yet, I want to select this entire body block. That means I want to select the entire body section. So what I can do is I can put my mouse over this section and press L on my keyboard. And again, L is the keyboard shortcut for island select. It selects this whole separate island or the block that's the body block. So now with just the body box selected, I can paint and I'm not affecting these vertices over here in the separate block. So I'm going to quickly turn up my radius to make a bigger paintbrush and I can just paint away. Um, the any the thing that's not dark blue. Now I can turn up my strength and that will automatically turn it to this weight. Basically the difference between strength and weight is the weight is the influence on that vertice that you want it to be. So we want no influence. The strength is basically how quickly your brush will paint away or influence that vertices weight. So if I turn my strength up to one, I don't have to hold my mouse over that very long. It'll turn to the color that I want right away. Okay, so we've painted away all the colors that aren't that dark blue for that body section. So I'm going to press A to deselect that section. And I want to work just on this arm. So I'll press L with my mouse over that section. And as you can see, the lower part of the arm is being affected just a little bit by this upper bone. So I'm going to select or start painting away um, that section. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good. I actually don't want these vertices around the bottom upper part of the bottom part of the arm uh, to be that color of blue. So I'm going to make my radius a little bit smaller and paint away the light blue in that section. Now, what green means is 50%. And that's actually exactly what I want for this middle edge loop or those four vertices. I'm going to flip over to the official documentation for Blender's weight paint mode and I'll put a link to this page in the description below. Basically this is a document, the official Blender wiki uh, for weight paint mode and it goes through all the options that you probably ever need including how to do different ramps, different brush sizes, the keyboard shortcuts for changing brushes and the different kinds of brushes you can use. I'm just using the mix brush basically right now. Um, but you can learn all about the weight paint mode here. The thing I want to point out is the color. So a weight of zero has this dark blue. A weight of one has red. That means it's entirely influenced. That vertice is entirely influenced by the, your selected bone. And of course it goes down to yellow and then green is halfway. So that's kind of what I want. I'm going to flip back over to Blender for this middle edge loop or these four vertices. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to select this next bone. So you'll notice that I'm selecting faces right now still. I can't select that bone because I still have this masking mode turned on. I'm going to turn that off and now I can select the next bone. That's looking okay, but this bottom section really should be red. So I'm going to go back into the masking mode and I'm going to press A a few times so I can get, uh, or press A and then L 
to get that whole block selected. Again, L is the island select keyboard shortcut. And now I'm gonna paint a weight of one. That means my full influence. And I'll turn my radius up a little bit too. And then there we go. So now I can paint that section red. And I probably want those vertices to be red too. Turn my radius down a little bit. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. I'm not gonna go through the entire mesh. I'm gonna stop talking at this point and we're gonna do a time lapse of me fixing the entire rig. Alright, so you might have noticed that around the parts where there are elbow joints and knee joints, if I selected a bone and then I went into masking mode and I pressed A to deselect anything else and then L to select just that block, you can paint with a specific weight. So for these middle joint vertices, in other words the edge loop around where the elbow joints and knee joints are, you can paint with a weight. So if I go in here and I type, let's say 0.5 and I press enter, I can now zoom in, and if I wanna make sure that these are exactly 0 0.5, they were in my case, but they not, might not be in your case, then you can do that and it'll be that green color. Now that I'm done weight painting, I made sure that all my blocks, if I go back into or turn off masking mode, I made sure all my blocks that are only controlled by one bone are entirely red, and the sections that are controlled by each bone entirely are entirely red, and then the transitions at the joints are green. I can now go back into object mode of my mesh, and then select the bones in pose mode and I can pose them and things should work just fine. So if I grab my head and I press R and Z on my keyboard, I can make his head turn. If I grab an arm joint and let's say I wanna rotate it, I can take, go to the rotate gizmo and make him his elbow bend and pose him exactly the way that I want. So that's gonna be it for this weight painting video. I just wanna give you one more little tip. You'll notice that when you rotate a bone, the gizmo does not follow the bone. In other words, if I press Alt R to clear that bone's rotation, on this bones will clear that one as well what I want to do is change my gizmo from global mode to local mode what that will allow me to do is when I rotate a bone you'll notice that right now my gizmos axes in other words the three hula hoops that I call them are pointing in the direction of the world in other words they'll follow this uh, little guide here and they'll follow the guides on our ground grid but as soon as I rotate this bone, you'll notice now that the gizmo is pointed in the direction of that bone. The blue line no longer goes in the up and down or side to side or across direction that it was before. And just to show you that, if I flip back into global mode, you'll see the gizmo is no longer in a very good position for us. So when you're rotating bones, especially things like arm bones, leg bones, and if you're making a more complicated rig, finger bones, then you want to switch your gizmo over to local mode and that will help you out a lot. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.